In this video, we're going to talk about how I use GPT-4 to code custom framework components like this scroll progress indicator you can see here. The first thing we need to do is just create a new code component. So click on this little plus next to code and type in the name of our component. So by default, Framer gives us this cute little example, but we're going to replace all the code here with code we generate with GPT-4. So let's jump over and generate some of that code. So there's a couple of things going on here. First, you probably don't recognize this interface. This is OpenAI's API playground. And the only reason I'm using it is because I have access to GPT-4. If you have ChatGPT Pro or whatever that's called, you can use GPT-4 in there. One thing to note is even though we're using GPT-4, it still writes quite a few bugs. If you know a little bit of React, you'll be able to fix most of the bugs. If you're a complete novice, you're going to struggle a little bit. The other advantage of using this interface is I have control over the output length and I can set it to its maximum so that none of my code snippets get cut off. Okay, so let's dive into the prompt. One interesting thing about this playground is it gives us this system prompt. This is just sort of like a constant piece of context that's fed to the AI throughout the conversation. I like to put some details in here about the code stack I'm using, but you can put all of this information into the main prompt. It doesn't really make that big of a difference. Let's go through it. You're a helpful coding assistant. You only reply in code snippets. My code stack is React, Frame Emotion, and Vanilla Object Styling no external CSS or styling libraries. Framer is built on top of React. And in fact, every time you make a Framer component, you're making a React component underneath. Framer Motion is the library that powers all the transitions in Framer. And so obviously we want to use those for animation. And the last bit is quite important. By default, Framer code components use vanilla object styling. A lot of code snippets out on the internet will use a third party styling library like Tailwind or styled components, and we can't use those. Okay, so let's dive into the main prompt. First sentence here, we're describing what we want. Create a horizontal scroll progress indicator component called scroll progress indicator. I recommend always using the name you want the component to use so that if you have to regenerate stuff, it's always the same name. The second sentence, we're describing a little bit more about what we want the component to do and look like. So make sure that the progress bar is rounded and so is the container. The progress indicator's opacity should be linked to the scroll progress. So we're sort of just describing some functionality here. And then the last line is kind of important. The component should be a regular function and not an arrow function. For some reason, Framer doesn't really like arrow functions. So I find it better to just make sure it's a regular function. So as you can see, for the sake of time, I've just gone ahead and generated some code. So what we want to do is just click in here and copy that out. And we're going to paste it into our Framer component. Now we can't really see much in the preview. So to check that it's working, we just need to add this component to the page. If we test that out, we can see that we've got a scroll progress indicator, but it's doing the opposite of what we want. It starts off at a really high opacity and then fades down to zero. So let's go fix that. Now, remember earlier when I said it's guaranteed to write some bugs, so having some React knowledge is really going to help. This is one of those cases. Because I've used frame of motion before, I can see that it's used the wrong values in this use transform hook. All we need to do is make this a zero and this a one. And now when we scroll, the line should get darker as we get to the bottom. So this is the first part of using AI to code something in Framer is just sort of iterating to get something you want on the page. Luckily, we've hit this pretty early on, but sometimes you can go back and forth with the AI to get exactly what you want. The next step is to add Framer property controls so that we can reuse this component and edit it from Framer's UI. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in a message that tells the AI to add property controls for the color, for the inset and for the orientation. So whether it's horizontal or vertical. Okay, so there's a couple things to note here. Framer property controls is important because that's what we call the things that Framer exposes so we can use components from the UI. You'll notice as I also specify the indicator color. You don't just want to say color, you want to be very specific about which things should be controlled. The inset from the edge of the window and whether or not the component is horizontal or vertical. You might be tempted to say orientation, 
but you want to be as specific as possible. So let's hit submit and see what it generates. Okay, cool. So now that that's finished generating, I'm just going to copy this whole component out and paste it back into our framer component. So one thing to remember is that because there was that bug the first time around, um, we fixed it in Framer and we didn't tell the AI it generated the same bug again. So let's just fix that again quickly. Okay, so that's working again, but as you can see, the bar is quite far down the page. To understand why that's happening, let's run through some of the code we just added. The new stuff we just added is predominantly this section here. These are framework property controls, and each one of these objects is a property that we can pass from the UI into our component. If I go back to the blog detail page and I select the component, you can see we have the color picker here and we have the inset, which we can control. See it's moving over here and we can toggle whether or not it is vertical or horizontal. So each one of these objects controls one of those fields. Each of these objects has a type, so number, color, boolean, etc., and a default value. So the default color and the default inset and the default orientation. So the reason we have this bug is the AI added some checks to check whether or not the orientation is vertical or horizontal. But the problem is this line here where it switches between being aligned to the top or the left, where actually in both cases it should be aligned to the top left. So the way we fix that is just by doing this. Sweet, so now it's aligned to the top and left inset. Let's go back to the block detail and play around with things. So if we increase the inset, the bar extends beyond the right edge of the screen. So we need to go fix that little detail. So the reason for this bug is this line. We're setting the container's width or height, depending on the orientation, to be 100%, but it should be 100% minus the inset. Okay, so the way we fix this is we need to replace this with some backticks like that. We're going to write calc, which is a CSS calculation function. I'm going to say 100% minus, I'm going to use some brackets. I'm going to say inset times 2, because we want the inset on either side. And we're going to put px at the end here to remind it that it's pixels. And we can also see that it's not above the header image here. So we just want to add a z index. We'll make it 10. Perfect. If we jump back into our blog detail, we can play with all of these properties and they behave how we expect. So that's pretty much it for this video. As you can see, AI is a helpful coding assistant, but it's not going to take our jobs anytime soon. If you enjoyed this video, that's great because it's a part of my Advanced Framer course, which you can find at advancedframer.com. So happy coding with your new virtual assistant, and I'll catch you next time.